cut oneself. Look at oneself. Wake up. Chest. Come to life. He eats. He eats. Get big. Chakasud. Become many. Nanst. Nanst. Become a woman. Slanitst. Slanitst. Become a man. Swankast. Swankast. Turn into a dog. Skahast. Skahast. Turning to stone. Snatnetst. Snatnetst. The word reflexive is related to the word reflect, as a mirror reflects oneself. Any grammatical item that refers to self is reflexive. The first two models here show the reflexive use of st or tsut suffix that you saw in the self and each other video. The rest of the models have the st or tsut suffix, but the meaning doesn't involve self. The term for the meaning in the last eight models share is encoative. They all refer to a change of state or becoming. The translation become is used for it sometimes, but turn into is, an, is another good translation. Probably the most common is simply get, as in the model get big. Sometimes it has no direct English translation, as in the model wake up, which is naturally a change of state from sleeping. The change of state meaning or suit typically refers to an internal change. That is, the change happens on its own and it isn't deliberately caused by an external force. So a word like suit, get big, means something gets big by itself. As for example, a child growing up. There is a prefix twa that also means become, but it isn't limited to internal changes. Many languages around the world, but not English, uses the same grammatical meaning to mark reflexive and encoative. The connection between self and change of state in Kalalam is that the change of state is happening to oneself. Note that in the eight models with the encoative translation, the change refers to something that happens by itself on its own. You should be able to um, recognize the stem in each of the models. They are all words that you've seen before. The st and suit suffix can attach to a verb as in the first four models, to an adjective, as in the next two models, or on a noun, as in the last four models. The last model, by the way, is based on the noun snot stone, with the actual infix. So how do you know if the suffix should be translated with self as a reflexive, or with become as an encoative? It will be translated as reflexive self, only if the stem has a strong two-participant meaning with one participant acting on or towards another. The stems for the first two meaning cut and look at have necessarily two participants. Someone or something to cut and get cut. Someone or something to look at or to be looked at. So the first two are necessarily, the rest have no, the rest have no necessary two participant meaning. Each of the other eight can be accom accompanied by one participant alone. Some words can be translated either as reflexive or as an encoative, and the overall meaning of this is the same. For example, the second model with the first person subject would be tschetzen and could be translated either as I woke up, encoative, or I woke myself up, which is reflexive. When do we use tst or tsut? First of all, the tst is about five times more common than suit. And the reason suit is less common is that it usually occurs only on, on zero stems, which never takes the stress. One more thing that must be mentioned about the form tst and suit suffixes is that, like the passive, it causes the stem vowel to shift. Itsutsa naskaha. Estonia, I squeaked at the quicks. 
Anasiya Yishchen. I managed to finally go. Hia Nungetsen. Hia Nungetsen. I managed to stay alive. Hi Nungetsen. Hi Nungetsen. I finally got to eat. Ichle Nungetsen. Ichle Nungetsen. I finally walked. Stang Nungetsen. Stang Nungetsen. I dreamed. Kui Nungetsen. Kui Nungetsen. I managed to grab. Kui Nungetsen. Kui Nungetsen. I accidentally swallowed. Nak Nungetsen. Nak Nungetsen. I accidentally shot myself. Chuk Nungetsen. Chuk Nungetsen. I managed to find out, or I managed to, I found out about myself. It should be clear from the examples that the primary meaning for this suffix is non-control. Other non-control suffixes have, int have been introduced in other pronouns, self and each other, passive sentences, and shifting vowels video. Non-control here means the same as those in the previous section, accidentally or managed to see or manage to succeed after trying or finally get to. In all of these, the agent has something without being in complete direct control. Inungit, inungit suffix isn't always translated with finally or accidentally. The fifth model, for example, quitnungit zen I dreamed isn't translated this way, but the non-control meaning can be easily seen in the idea of dreaming where the dreamer isn't in control of the situation. The nungit suffix is similar to the meaning nu, non-control transitive. And the difference is that nungit is intransitive. The nungit suffix is also similar in meaning to the un, middle suffix that you've seen in the participants in Rules and Middle Voices video. The difference is that nungit adds the non-control meaning. And just as with the um, the middle, the nungit, non-control middle, can sometimes be interpreted as a reflexive. The last two models show this, and the last model shows that the interpretation can be either reflexive or simply non-control. This reflexive interpretation is rarer than nungit, non-control middle, than it is for um, the middle. And as the models show, the nungit suffix attaches to the verb root and only to verbs. The fourth model, Stung Nungit shows the non control middle suffixes onto a one participant middle stem. The Nungit suffix is always stressed. You know it's on a skaha. Chang Nungit sa. And this is the contingent. Tang Nungit. I managed to go depending on someone for a ride, for example. He had to not get some. He had to not get some. I finally got to eat depending on someone for food. Ethan to not get some. Ethan to not get some. I'll take over. It's to not get. It's to not get. It is possible that this suffix is related to or contains the non-control middle, but the distinction is clear if you compare the first model here with the first model here. This first model, hia no ngit, finally get to go, is nearly the same in the meaning as the first model right here. Ta no ngit implies that getting to go was or is, in, is contingent or dependent on someone or something else. The second model shows the dependence idea more clearly. The speaker of this sentence is expressing the idea that he was waiting for a dependent on a situation or another person to provide food. This suffix can occur on a focused pronoun as in the third model. This can also be translated, I'll be the one to do it, or I'll fill the vacancy. It'll depend on me. It is this last translation possibility that shows the idea of dependence or contingency. The tanoknet suffix always has stress independent of the stem it is attached to. The stem keeps its stress so that both the stem and the suffix are stressed. 
This is unusual for clawing suffixes. Khashtin, nak tunok nak kui. Ay, et tunok nak.